by giving away that many ga many goals in a season. You know, you're talking more than one goal in a season. Now, fortunately, they're still in contention because as much as they've lost nine, they've scored 18. But you can't expect to continually give teams, number one, a start, and then think you're just going to turn round and outscore them, particularly away from home. So, yeah, I don't believe the problems they're having are because they're not warmed up properly or they're not starting well. The problems they've got, they haven't solved from last year as far as the back four playing together. And the midfield, but also we talked about goalies yesterday for, well, for way too long, actually. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, yeah. But we talked about goalies, uh, you know, Anana, Rhea, Ramsdale, how they're taking chances from the back. But, but Liverpool, in, in, in some sense, partly in some of those clips and other games, have shot themselves in the foot with some of the passes out from the back, you know, and Van Dijk being, certainly being one of them. But one of the things we looked at was, and, and Stevie talked about this in particular last year, was how Liverpool lost legs in the middle of the park, the ability to get around the field. Now, they've signed a couple of players uh, in those positions in the middle of the park, but they're more offensive players. So Boslai, who is terrific, and McAllister, who is a terrific player, but you're effectively asking Alexis McAllister to play in a slightly different role than he was doing at Brighton. And I don't think Liverpool have quite adapted to that yet. So we looked at his stats from Brighton, uh, where he played. And you can see there from the middle of the park and in that front, in the middle graphic at 13.9% in the attacking areas, where he spent an awful lot of time in the opposing third compared to at Liverpool, where he's on the edge of the box only 5.5% of the time and he's doing more defensive work. So. What Liverpool signed was a guy who really was playing a lot of his stuff, as you can see from that graphic on the left, in the opposing half for Brighton, whereas at Liverpool he's playing a lot of his stuff in the defensive half. And whilst he's been OK at that, I don't think we've seen the best McAllister this season. He's made some mistakes, he got taken off at Wolves at half-time, but I think that was because he'd played for Argentina and he'd travelled. We'll give him a bit of leeway there. But I, I just feel that playing McAllister where you're playing him, he'll do a job, but it's certainly not Fabinho at his peak. It's certainly not Rodri. McAllister's skill set is further up the field. That's where he was playing for Brighton. The graphic will back it up. But there's no doubt, looking at the stats for McAllister, his job is more defensive at Liverpool, and therefore the back line isn't getting the, 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 the uh, protection it needs from a proper defensive midfielder. And that's why they went after Caicedo. That's why they went after Lavia at, at, at uh, Southampton, who went to Chelsea. They were searching for that player. They didn't get him. McAllister's having to fill that role. It doesn't make them a bad side, but it's certainly they're not a perfect side with him playing there. I've got, I've got an old coach of mine ringing and running around in my head right now, a guy called Ronnie Moran. And every single thing Craig said, I 100% I agree with. But what Ronnie Moran would say is, well, hold on a second. If we can get in the middle of the park to stop teams getting at us very often, then that's great. But then he would take the back four and look at them and say, right, by the way, your job is to defend. It's not the midfield's fault that we can't defend. We'll take any help we can get from them. But your job is to defend. And that's exactly what he would say. And that's what I'm going to say. Now, if, if Liverpool can get a midfield that is just a wall that stops anybody getting through, then that's fantastic. Everybody would love that. But the fact of the matter is, when teams do get through, you have to do your job. You have to defend properly. And they're not doing that. And that's a problem. I find that a problem. Big the time. Fact, they've had Curtis Jones in there, who's done a decent job. They had, they've had Harvey Elliott in there. They've probably had... Uh, Endo's been in there trying to do a defensive, but, that, but they've had Jones and Elliot, and if, you, if they could get Sabozla and McAllister further up and somebody more defensive in there in January, I, I think that would be a much better fit for this Liverpool side. Look, they don't have that. There is no doubt McAllister's a better player further up the field. He proved that at Brighton. He's just not been able to play that at Liverpool at the moment. And I think we've seen some negative impact of that in McAllister's play. Louise, how do you pinpoint what's happening here to Liverpool? 
Well, actually, I, I think the, the guys just uh, spot on what is happening for, for Liverpool. Uh, starting from, from the back, when you don't have a, a team that uh, knows each other as well as they should, that's the maladjustment, uh, miscommunication. When the one goes out, uh, they create the space, the other one doesn't follow. So you can work on the, on, on the, during the week to try to cover that, to try to implement a way and a style of play. And that's fantastic. But when you are changing every single weekend, a week in and week out, a play into the middle, in the, into the, into the um, back four, you are missing a chance, you are missing a piece. And then the communication is different. Who is playing on the left? Who is playing on the right? How is he played? Uh, what kind of uh, player do I have today? That's something that for every single team in the world is basic. Having the four at the back that know each other, that play every single week together to try to build a, a trust in between them. That together with the with the keeper. I think he's very important and, and I think Steve just mentioned it very well and explained it very well. In the middle of the pack, I totally agree also with Craig. I think that is missing a piece right there. Fabinho, Henderson, they were players who allowed Liverpool to go forward, to make that kind of pressure, intense pressure in the last there. And in transition, if you lose the ball, because it's easier to to, to uh, break the, the football than create it, destroy it than create it. When you are creating football and you have an opponent that... Uh, try to take, regain the ball and try to destroy that kind of uh, build-up. In transition, you need players who can, with legs, follow that track back and help the line of four. And we don't have any more. McAllister is a player that is very creative, that on the build-up is very helpful. But when he's arriving to that last third and have to make a transition going back, he's not a speed player. He doesn't have the power that Fabinho had or Henderson had. So now we're missing a player. I think that's why Endo arrived to Liverpool, to try to give it that leg strength that is missing there. In transition, uh, in defence, we are struggling. That's why the line of Two, because they remember that our fullbacks, they are going very, very high on the, on the side. You are, you are having only two centre-backs plus the, the holding midfielder. The holding midfielder is not a player who likes to track back. So that transition is where Liverpool is struggling so much. And, well, we are th I think that we look vulnerable at the moment. Hopefully, bit a bit during the season, recovering players, we can be a little bit more solid. But I think it's missing one, uh, one piece there in the middle. When you look at that defence that you were talking about, that chopping and changing around, how is Klopp going to fix this matter? Well, it doesn't seem that he's going to be able to have an opportunity to fix it. As we've spoken, I'd be shocked if Robertson's fit for, for the Everton game, which means, again, as I said, another change. So unless you can get some consistency and you can, you can say to, to four players, right, this is, this is next three, four games, unless somebody gets suspended or injured or something like that, this is what I'm doing. These four are playing together so we can get some sort of consistency. Because we haven't had any consistency. There hasn't been a game that Liverpool has come off the field and said, you know what, that half or that hour or whatever, we were so good, we were so solid, we were so together. He hasn't been able to do that. And he hasn't been able to do it primarily because he hasn't been able to put the same four. At the same time, I'm not so sure that he's going to have to change some faces. Because this is, as I said, this has started 18 months ago. That's a long time to still have the same problem you had 18 months ago. And if you want to contend in the Premier League, Klopp's going to have to start looking at that back four and decide who needs to go and who needs to stay. Because it's so, getting close it's only, to that. It's only three points off the top, though, isn't it? So what does that tell us? That's because they're so and, good going and, forward. And it would have been one point, but for, and it's ifs and buts, but, but for the... Uh, the, the, the criminal, crazy uh, VAR uh, offside that, that ruled a goal outside. So, you know, we, we picked apart... <laughs> again, I mean, we picked apart Arsenal a little bit yesterday in their second top, and, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know, sometimes you just look at teams and how are these teams... How are these teams going to go the whole season with Man City? And people might say... People might be sure, ah, Man City there. Man City will... The only thing we know is Man City will come through whatever it is they're going through, a couple of defeats for them in the Premier League is a disaster, right? They will come back, they will come back strong, their, their big players will come back and they'll put a run together. It, the question then is, how do these other clubs like Liverpool and Arsenal, who are trying to get back to the top of the tree, how, how do they compete? And, and I think we, we have certainly seen some flaws in both sides at the start of the season, but the good news is for them that they're up there, they haven't had a disastrous start, uh, although this injury to Robertson and any more that could cough up for Liverpool could be could be big trouble for them. Uh, 
But but yeah, I, I I don't know about you, but every time I watch Liv, I'm, when I watch Liverpool, I'm just always thinking, right, there's 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 a mistake waiting to happen. 